So right now we are going to make a peeling animation and it's going to look like this. I hope you're ready for it because we are already getting started. So right over here I have this model but it is way too detailed, way too intricate. There are a lot of things added to this that we actually don't want to have for the geometry node animation. Otherwise it will take a whole lot of time and that's not what we want to have. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm heading into edit mode and as you can see it is quite the beast this one. I'm going to press L on this part, I'm going to press L on this part and simply separate the selection that is going to look exactly like this plane. So geometry nodes, I'm heading over into this tab and we're going to add a new node and we basically want to split the edges. So there's a node for that. I'm going to click on new, group input and right now it has all this geometry. And the thing that's going to be wrong for this one is that it doesn't have enough geometry on the outer side. As you can see, this is just a simple plane, but we actually need a whole lot more geometry for our split edges to work. And you know what? I'm going to show you first. I'm going to set a split edges node right over here. Split edges. I'm going to bring in a skill elements node and bring it right behind the split edges. And if I decrease this skill, all edges will uh, scale separate from each other because they have been split. So all of them are now, well, their own sort of instance. We are scaling this. Now, of course, if we want to make an animation that looks very cool and detailed, this plane is not going to suffice. This is not going to look very good. All we have to do is add some more loop cuts to this, like so. And maybe we can even do it like this and do it like that as well. If you have a model that needs to do the same work, please do that because it will make your animation look a whole lot better. I'm just going to add it like this. It doesn't really matter how many or how much they are because it's going to be quite erratic anyways. Uh, but there are a couple of things that we need to change. We want to have a proximity object that is going to determine whether this is going to scale and fly away. We're going to bring in that geometry proximity object right here. So shift A mesh. I like using UV spheres. You can also get an empty or stuff like that. I'm just going to use a UV sphere. So right over here, I'm going to bring it down and click on this original mesh, drag the sphere into this area. Set it to relative. I'm going to click on geometry proximity and basically we want to plug the distance into the scale and you'll see what happens distance into the scale and right now if I move this nothing happens at all. And why is that? Because it is not set to relative. I'm going to bring this upwards and you can already see that everything is scaling to a zero position. So all we need to do now is control how far the scale is going upwards to our uh, perfume bottle. And we're also going to determine the strength of it in a different manner. But first I'm going to add in a map range node, map range right over here, plug it in there. And as you can see, if we increase the from max, the range towards where it happens is going to be increased. And you can play around with this, give it something that you like. I'm simply going to add this here and not do anything with it yet. We are going to do that later on. So now basically what we want to do is when this UV sphere is moving upwards, all of this is simply scaling, but it's not moving outwards. And I think that is a problem. We want to actually make sure that it's moving outwards as well. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to add a set position node right over there. I'm going to give myself some space. And basically what we want to do is add a noise texture. So if I got a noise texture right over here, I'm going to plug the color into the offset. And right now you can see something is happening. So of course you can play around with these settings. So 5.5 or decrease the amount of settings and then it will move like this and it looks a bit more like the original shape. Uh, but you can already see that there is a problem right here, namely that it is being distorted already without any animation happening. So it is not dependent on our geometry proximity and we actually want to change that. But before we actually do that, uh, there's one other problem, namely that our scale animation is still just going upwards. All these particles are not moving outwards. Nothing is happening really. So we should click on this and actually we want to take the normals in this case. So I'm going to get the data for the normal, which is right over here, geometry read, normal, and we have to combine these nodes using a factor math node. Factor math right in here. I'm going to set this to multiply, plug this one in the bottom socket, normal into the vector, and there you go. It is now moving outwards with a slight noise animation as well. But as you can see, the noise is distorting our entire object, and that is exactly what we don't want to have. So basically, we want a way to have this UV sphere determine where this is happening. And the way to do it is actually quite simple. We can add another multiply node. And this multiply node set to zero is actually canceling out everything that we did before. But if we now use a map range node, so I'm going to press control shift D and bring this downwards and it will keep its connection. So now we can change this one separately from that one. I'm going to plug the result into the vector of the multiply. And there you have it. You can already see something is happening, but it is probably happening the wrong way around because it's now moving outwards 
it is moving inwards. So basically what we have to do is bring in another map range node right here underneath the noise texture. And I'm going to copy my original settings, which are right over here. And I'm going to use that for this map range node. So what it does, it basically inverts the entire selection. So we have the from min, which is now starting from one, but in the original map range node, it starts from zero. And the from max is going to minus 0.1 could be something else, could be zero as well. Uh, simply play, play around with this until you get to a type of shape that you like, but it's still not moving outwards. And the reason for it is that this one should be inverted as well, one and zero. So in this original map range node right over here, we're going to change the from min to one and the from max to zero. You can also do the two min to one, and the two max to zero. It doesn't really matter that much, to be honest. But now it's moving outwards and it is disappearing slowly like this. And that's actually what we want. That is the exact animation that we're looking for. Of course, there are some more. We want to turn this also into a liquid because now we only have this animation and you can play around with the settings. Maybe you can get to something that you, uh, that you like, you know, if you want to stretch it out like that, that is also definitely possible. So go ahead, play around with all the map range nodes and get to a different result to whatever you would like. Now we're going to make the liquid. How are we going to make the liquid as we are in geometry nodes? We are not going to make a liquid simulation or anything crazy like that. We are simply going to turn this into a volume, turn the volume back into a mesh and everything will work out fine, trust me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a joint geometry. Join geometry right over here because we're going to make a separate mesh for the liquid, but we also want to keep this data as well. We should turn this mesh into points. So I'm going to do that straight away. Mesh to points. Set position into the mesh and this one into the join geometry. And as you can see, we now get a bunch of blobs. And if we play this outwards, it is, you can kind of guess how this is going to go. So basically we want to change these points into a volume. So I'm going to add another note, points to volume. And now it is a volume. Of course, this is smoke. So that's also not what we need. But if we turn this volume into a mesh again, volume to mesh, now we get something that you like. So that was the tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one. I'm just kidding. We're going to make this better. Don't worry about it. I know you're already getting your panties in a bunch, but there's no reason to worry. We're going to fix everything. So I'm going to set the voxel amount to 128 and this will make the computer a little bit slower, but it will add some more smoke, let's say, some more volume. And we can also change the radius of this to 0 0.015 or something. Ah, there you go. That's starting to look like the liquid effect that we created earlier. Now, don't make it too big or your PC will explode. 0.05, something like this. Now, as you can see, this is now what the animation is looking like. We already get that liquid effect just a little bit. And we can also change the density to maybe 0.3. Uh, maybe we can even increase the density. It uh, entirely depends on what we want to do later on. Uh, of course, I'm going to add one more node right here. Uh, it's quite important. I'm going to add a set shade smooth and that will smoothen out this liquid. So as you can see, it is turning back on, but we actually want it to disappear because if it doesn't disappear, then well, the entire effect kind of doesn't work, doesn't it? So let's set this to viewport mode for now. I'm going to turn on the other bottle as well. And this is what it looks like. I'm going to bring it upwards and it is moving out of each other. And that is kind of the effect that we're going for, but there are a couple of things that you may notice. First of all, uh, this is of course not entirely covered. So there's something that we should change in this geometry node setup. And you can probably guess already what it is, uh, but we have to keyframe some of these settings. So let's have a look at this one. I'm going right over here to the geometry proximity and I'm going to add a math node. I'm going to set it to multiply as well. And basically what we want to do is make sure that at the end of the animation, it ends at zero. 0.5 seems to be like the golden angle that we're looking for. And we want to animate this. So I'm going to press I on this multiply and on the end of the animation, let's say on frame 100, uh, actually it should be based on the animation of the UV sphere, of course. Uh, so we're going to the UV sphere, go to frame one, go to frame 100, let's say, and bring this upwards and make sure that everything is gone, press I. So this is basically the animation that is going on right now. It's moving. It is slowly falling apart, but it's also coming back together. And that's not what we want to have. So there's another thing that we need to keyframe. Who would have guessed? Uh, on frame 100, the multiply should be zero. There's still some volume on this and we should also keyframe the volume naturally. Right here on frame one, I'm going to point the volume. So increase it. You can also increase the radius, but don't do it too much because otherwise 
your PC will die. 0.025, and this should be enough. I'm going to set it to I, and then on frame 100, I'm going to set this to zero, and you will see that everything is now uncovered. There is no mesh left to destroy. Bring it inwards and have it come faster or later on in this animation, and then everything will disappear on time. And that's basically just playing around with the keyframes until you get something that you like, because now, of course, it is only going to be gone right over there. But if you want it to be gone sooner, that's also possible. So right over here, the liquid is already gone, and the only thing left uh, are our original scaled particles, which are right over here, and some of these blobs, which will soon disappear. Of course, there is some flickering here at the end. What you could probably do is maybe increase the scale of this, like right over here, and then very abruptly set it to zero, like in a couple of frames. And then it is going to be a whole lot better. I don't know why I didn't think of this before. We have our liquid going upwards. Ooh, and it's already building up right there. And that has to do, of course, with our map range nodes. So if we increase the two max, or if we decrease the two min uh, of the from max, then you will be able to get a result that looks pretty good. So something like this should probably work out. It's playing off like this. And that's the only part that's quite annoying about the tutorial is that you have to play around with the map range nodes in order to get it exactly right for your animation. So in this case, it is already building back up, but it's still not done. So that is just something that you have to take into account. You only have to play with these map range nodes in order to solve that problem. And you can also, of course, increase the amount of skill on the noise texture, get something funky out of this, uh, increase the from min or from max to have it go outwards just a little bit more, play around with these settings until you get to something that you like. Like, and this is basically the way our entire liquid is being built up. Now, anyway, the final thing that we need to do is add a set material node and just choose the gold material. And then uh, right over here, we basically have the animation that I showed you in the short. Of course, play around with these values in order to get to something that you actually like. I don't like this one, but I'm going to make a better one. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you had some fun. Uh, it's a very simple setup. You get the liquid, you get the scale animation. I hope you learned a thing or two, and if you did, Please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.